Hello friends, today we come to the third part of our uh, lecture and uh, as I have already said in the earlier talks, our focus will be on what to listen for and why. Now, as I have said in some of the earlier talks, listening is a very, very compo important component of uh, our life. And uh, sometimes I jokingly tell my friends or rather my student friends when they join me that uh, probably they are much better listeners than I am and there is a reason for that. You find that uh, when we start our lives, we start off uh, trying to make sense of whatever we hear because as kids unless we are able to learn the language of the adults we will not be able to express our desires and if we are not able to express our needs and desires, we will not get the things we want. So, there is an existential necessity to learn a new language which is being used by the adults and in order to do that, we have to use the ears to first listen and master the language. Speech is definitely a very, very important component because as we listen, we speak. So, the two definitely go side by side, especially when we are young kids, both the things go on side by side. In fact, young kids do not listen much, they make a lot of babbling noise, they speak a lot, but at one point of time, they realize that listening is very essential if they have to learn a language and they have to learn a language because without learning the language, their desires cannot be fulfilled, their needs cannot be taken care of. So, in some sense you might say that this is the origin of listening and as we proceed, we find that uh, we go to schools where we are asked to listen to lectures, we go to colleges, universities where we are again asked to listen and uh, even in our adult life as happens with many of you are now you are being asked to listen. Now, what happens in the process is that uh, most of the students become very good listeners. Whereas, most of us who are no longer students and continue to speak become poor listeners. So, that is the, the light and the humorous side of things, but there is definitely a truth, an element of truth in the fact, uh, in the saying that uh, listening is very, very significant uh, and a very, very significant part of our lives. So, this is the overview of what we are going to do today. We will start off with a quiz to find out how do you feel about your own listening. And uh, after you have completed the quiz, uh, you can go to the discussion and you have listened to the uh, lecture, then you find out and make an assessment of how correctly do you feel that you had been able to complete the quiz. So, that is this is the quiz that uh, we are going to focus on. You complete the quiz and then you tell me in the discussion, whether uh, your own assessment in the quiz before you listen to this presentation from me and after you listen to the presentation are perceptibly different or not. Okay. Then we will move on after the quiz to the introduction, the relevance of listening, barriers of barriers to listening, how to become a good listener, listening in groups and of course, the references. So, the first point uh, is that, that uh, listening has a very, very strong uh, dimension of interpersonal uh, communication, of emotions, of support that uh, I do not feel that it is appropriate to just talk about listening in the context of how to memorize better, how to understand better, how to capture the main points more effectively. Now, if you are looking at that kind of listening, well that is good enough for exams, that is good enough for students, but if you are looking at the interpersonal con context, if you are looking at the soft skills context, then listening of a different kind needs to be looked at and that is what we will do as we proceed. So, uh, the point is that uh, very often listening to somebody is a way of telling the other person that you care. And, uh, in that sense, uh, a little earlier, I, I already shared with you how listening is the mother of all speaking, because unless you listen to young uh, 
to the adults, the you are not able to grow up as a child and learn the new language, the language of the adults. But the other side of uh, listening, which is the uh, side of emotions, is best illustrated uh, by a short story by Anton Chekhov, the well-known Russian writer. Uh, and uh, I will briefly share the story with you. In one of the cities of uh, Russia, it is a cold evening, probably a long day, but a long bitter cold day. And we are introduced to the central character, Iona, who is a cab driver, who is a horse cab driver. And uh, we are introduced to a person who is sitting quietly, totally defeated, bent double as the snow is falling on upon him, upon his little horse and the snow is falling all around him. And he has been waiting for a very long time without being able to take a passenger. After two hours of waiting, the first passenger comes in, he is some official on some official business, a humorous kind of a person. And uh, as this person is driving on the road, there are minor accidents or minor miscommunications, people are getting angry with him and all that. And the officer jokes and pokes fun at him and in a light hearted and uh, uh, casual way. And at some point of time, Iona feels that maybe the officer is interested to know about him. And he tells the officer that, do you know sir, my son died a week back. And the officer uh, shows a little bit of interest. And this man turns around, the cab driver turns around to talk to him. But in the process, you see that he is not able to focus on the road and the officer gets angry with him. And after that, uh, he wants to make uh, communication again, he wants to talk again. But the officer has forgotten all about it, he is not no longer interested. He drops the officer and he waits again and picks up uh, three youths, two of them uh, bantering, talking casually in an interesting way. And the third one is a hunched back who seems to be a cruel kind of a person. And they poke fun at him, they beat him up uh, in a light hearted way and he forgives them in his mind. Again with them also, he is trying his best to communicate and say that, do you know my son died a week back and even keeps on trying to speak about it and they are not listening to him. So this is all he gets, manages to get only two fares, he comes back dead tired to the place of rest where the other cab drivers are also taking rest, finds a person who is half asleep, half drunk, says that you would like, like a drink. And this person wakes up fitfully and says that who would not like a drink. And the moment he finds him awake, he is again trying to share the same story with him and with the same result. At the end of this, he goes to his small horse uh, to take care of the horse, to give him food, to nourish him. And then he starts talking to the horse. And as he starts talking to the horse, he finds that the horse is looking at him in a very fixed way. And then he tells it all, then he narrates the story of his son's death to the horse. That is how the story comes to an end. It is a very poignant story because it is a story about listening or not listening. And it is a story about interpersonal communication where in the first three instances communication fails. And in the last instance where he is trying to tell the horse that if you had a son and if he had died, how would you have felt and all that you realize that uh, listening is so very important or at least the horse may, may be listening, the horse may be hearing that is a different issue altogether. But at least the fact that he feels that the horse is listening becomes so very, very important in order to unload to share his grief. So now the relevance of listening, one research uh, uh, the reference to which is given at the back tells us that uh, listening is maybe 45 percent of what we do. And uh, another uh, research tells us that uh, most people believe that they are good listeners. That is why in the quiz I asked you to take that quiz right at the beginning because you might find that most of you feel that you are good listeners. Even I feel or I used to feel that I am a good listener. But uh, the actual efficiency is probably much less than that 
probably we are capable of listening much more intensely than we actually listen. We do not throw in everything into our listening, but if we do that probably we would benefit a lot from that. Now, that is one of the things that uh, we would like to talk about as we proceed with this session uh, in the context of uh, interpersonal communication, soft skills, uh, honing of this listening skill strategy. Now, all this while you have been listening to me uh, in your environment, it could be using a headphone or you might be in a bus, you might be sitting at home, but for a moment stop listening to me. Try to listen to whatever you are able to hear all around you, give a moment to that. I am sure that uh, now that you are focusing not on my voice, because my voice anyway is not there, but on whatever else is there in your surrounding, you must be able to hear something or the other or if not anything else you would be able to focus on the silence that is there in the absence of my voice. Now, the point I would like to make is that uh, listening has to be differentiated from hearing. A lot of sounds which are around us, but we did not necessarily listen to all of them. You see that uh, the, the brain is capable of focusing on or the mind or the attention whatever you call it on just a single thing at a point of time. So, when I focus on something obviously, I am not in a position to focus on other things. When you are focusing on my voice, when you are listening to me, you are no longer able to focus on the ambient sounds which surround me. So, this is very very important that every time listening takes place you are foregrounding something as opposed to something else. So, my voice foregrounded against whatever small noise is around or silence. And when we are talking about uh, this aspect of foregrounding, even when you are listening to somebody within that also certain kind of foregrounding takes place. You can listen for information, you can listen for specific uh, emotions whenever you are listening for some particular things, you are obviously foregrounding that as opposed to something else. This is just to make you aware of the fact that uh, listening is not a very simple thing, uh, there are complex things involved, attention is involved and you attend to specific things at specific points of time. If I say that uh, please listen in the next few words to the number of times I uttered the expression the then you are not listening to anything else, you are forgetting about the content, you are only focusing on how many times I uttered the word the. So, you see that even in the small ex uh, exercise that we are doing right now, when you are listening to my saying the word the T H E, you see that the listening is diverted in that direction and you are missing out many other things. So, having realized that it is a complex process, the entire uh, brain is involved in a fairly uh, complicated way with the entire thing, our memory is involved, attention, uh, classification of information, a lot of things are going on, we will talk about some of them. Having realized that, now let us first find out what is, ex ex what is it exactly that uh, we use, what is the, what are the things we listen for. When anything is being said, there are things which are already known to us or are being said in a repetitive way, uh, these happen to be cliches or well known facts in which you may or may not be interested. We are listening to information being communicated, so facts. In the process we are listening to somebody's attitude, thoughts and beliefs, what he or she believes in, what kind of an attitude that person has about specific things. For instance, after listening to me for let us say one and a half hours or one hour and twenty minutes, you will get to know something about how what I believe in, what I do not even within this given small context of communication and then of course, feelings and emotions, display of feelings or emotions, display of warmth, things like that. So, information and emotions, these are the key things that permeate, so even cliches fit into the category of information thoughts and beliefs, information, these, these manage to give us information and they also communicate emotions to us. 
thoughts and beliefs, attitudes they manage to shape the way we perceive somebody else's emotions when we are listening. So, it is a fairly complex process, but the, the basic point I am trying to make is that these are the key things which we glean from listening as we are listening attentively. But there can be barriers to listening and it is very important to realize that uh, in interpersonal communication these barriers have to be overcome. So, what are the barriers we are talking about? There can be linguistic barriers like you do not understand me or the, you do not understand the way I speak this language. Physical barriers you are not able to hear me, you are not able to uh, listen to me because of whatever reasons, you have, you have a poor hearing and we have psychological barriers. Psychological barriers where you do not want to listen, you have no intention of listening, you believe that uh, you know everything there is to know about it. So, these are the three barriers to listening. The first and the two, uh, uh, the, the first one and the second one are not the ones which we are focusing on as we are discussing about listening. When we are discussing listening, we are talking about the psychological barriers, because these are the key barriers we have to overcome. So, when I am talking about good listening in the next few slides, I am essentially talking about empathetic listening, listening which uh, will help us communicate better in socio-cultural environments. And uh, listening as a kind of a therapy, as a kind of a technique through which we improve our understanding of other people and we improve our understanding of ourselves. Now, that is something which you would be really meaningful. Look your friends, what I am trying to share with you and of course, this is not my own the references will tell you that obviously, I have borrowed some of the concepts from others, but what I am trying to share with you what I strongly believe in is that uh, learning smartly about the tricks of listening is not good enough. If you learn how to be a good listener, you also learn in the process how to be a better human being and probably that is going to be more effective in the long run. So, how to become a good listener? So, I have kind of classified the various ideas under three categories. The first one is preparation, talk less and listen more. You see that uh, in most contexts, if you sit down silently and look around you, find that people are speaking a lot. If you observe groups, you will find that in groups, one person is speaking and maybe two people have interrupted him a meanwhile and a third one is waiting for an opportunity or a break and if he does not get a break, he shouts or she shouts and speaks in. So, what basically is happening is that people are uh, intensely interested in expressing their ideas, their views, we are centered on ourselves, we are focused on ourselves, we want our voices to be heard. Now, speaking is important, we will talk about speaking in the next uh, session, but before we speak, silence becomes very, very significant. Now, if we make uh, this an ex a small activity, a small exercise that in a group suddenly sit down, realize that uh, you had listened to this talk and you sit down quietly and listen to other people, no longer participating uh, as a speaker, but silently listening to the other people. You will realize that how everybody is desperately trying to speak and uh, if we are able to control this desperation to a very great extent, we are able to understand the needs and requirements of other people, which is a key component of uh, emotional intelligence, which we will be doing at a later point of time. So, you can consider whatever I am sharing with you as a kind of a preparation for that. Now, the second point is that do not interrupt unless needed. Now, we are all in a hurry in, a, in, a, in the modern civilization, we are all in a hurry, but at least when you are beginning a conversation at least for a few minutes allow the other person to speak without interrupting. We very often do not manage to do that. We believe that our time is precious, this person is eating away our time, so I must interrupt that person, but also make a practice of not interrupting the person unless you find that uh, the time is slowly slipping away. You find that the, the initial process of patiently listening to somebody gives you a certain degree of credibility. The other person starts realizing that you are, you are actually interested in what you are saying. So, when you interrupt him at a later point of time when it is required, he does not take offense, he does not feel that he is just uh, it is just a business communication or whatever. 
because whether we are talking about a business communication, whether we are talking about sociocultural uh, uh, communication in the context of uh, workplace of uh, needs requirements, deep down uh, we have a need for feeling happy and this to a very great extent modifies our transactions, the success or our failure of our negotiations and various, various other things of our persuasion strategies of our being good leaders. So, this is something which you need to be very much aware of that very often a good, uh, good uh, reader, uh, leader happens to be also a good listener or a patient listener. So, basically the first two points are kind of summed up in the last point which is developing patience understanding because when you are doing all these things you are not only developing patience you are developing insight you are also developing understanding and these become very significant as you listen. In the discussion forum that uh, we will be placing uh, very soon uh, as along with this talk you will find that uh, we will take you to certain interesting videos we will take you to some interesting activities uh, which link you to listening and which take your feedback about listening and uh, these will kind of supplement what I am sharing with you right now in various contexts. Now, you might call it uh, preparatory listening, you might even call it uh, preparatory true listening in whichever way you take it. Now, there are things that you need to listen for. Listen for disrespect, uh, listen for respect by this which uh, what we mean to say is that uh, you are listening for the attitude. Is it that uh, somebody is uh, showing a negative attitude? Because what happens is that uh, our behavior, our interaction, our feelings towards others is very often subconsciously determined by what we listen to. Deep down probably we feel in some way that this person is offending me and without even realizing that you have become aggressive. So, if you develop this awareness and identify which are the points which seem to be offensive, then you develop a certain degree of clarity. You realize that whether this person is actually being offensive or not so, you realize once you have realized that you decide you can determine because now your anger, your anxiety, your irritation is at a conscious level, you have realized about that whether you should react aggressively or patiently, your strategies can be much more meaningfully articulated because you are looking for disrespect, you are looking for disharmony and you are looking deep down within you to find out what is it in the other person's voice, tone, speech, text that is causing it. Listen for mutual purpose. Now, this is a training which makes it possible for you to have very good uh, interpersonal communication. What is it? that you are interested in, what is it that the other person is interested in. Now, this increases self awareness, it also increases the awareness about the other person, her needs or his needs and uh, you would be able to speak more meaningfully in a more sustained way, constructive way about the possible ways that you can collaborate, cooperate, interact in a mutually purposeful manner. The third point that uh, we would like to focus on is uh, cultivate the beginners here or cultivating an attitude of as if you are listening for the first time, attitude of a sense of wonder. Now, when you do that your perception is sharpened, obviously it is not possible at all points of time to do that, but if you try to develop this kind of an attitude your perception is sharpened because every time you are you are more energetic, you are more attentive, you are more vigorous, your memory is into it, your total concentration is into it. So, this is the beginners here as if you are listening to somebody for the first time and you are able to listen to a lot more things, uh, lot more nuances in terms of emotions as well as information when you do this. Manage your emotions. Now, you see that if you train in this particular way of uh, listening, it is easy for you to manage your emotions because you are now aware of your own emotions and once you are aware of your own emotions you know that you are irritated and you know the cause of this irritation and you are able to dissect and know exactly what is causing it, whether it is that the other person unknowingly is causing irritation or is knowingly causing irritation, then you can control yourself. When you know that it is unintentional, you do not hurt the other person, you do not get aggressive on the other person and the miscommunication which possibly could have taken place 
or would have taken place is kind of stopped. The miscommunication is uh, something which you are able to avoid. Empty yourself of bias. Now, this gets linked to the element of uh, cultivating a beginner's ear and it basically means that uh, when you are listening, for instance, the moment you come uh, and so you, the moment you switch on your machine and listen to this talk, you know that ok, ok, this is the this is what the other this person had told told me in the last class, so probably is going to talk in the same way. Now, this is a bias. Every time we listen to somebody, if I am listening to my family, my parents or my son or daughter or my friend, since I know that person, I kind of bring in all the biases, we bring in all the presuppositions about that person into my listening. Now, if you can get rid of this, then we listen to things again in a new way and in a much more perceptive and meaningful way. Practice taking crap. Now, this becomes very, very relevant in the context of interpersonal communication, in the context of uh, uh, commerce, trade, business communication, in the context of socializing. The ability to patiently hear things, the ability to patiently listen to things which you may not agree with and uh, not to react to that very strongly and not to react to it in a conscious way where you know what exactly you are doing and why you are doing it. Now, when you have practiced these elements to a very great extent, your listening improves in a significant way. Now, let us come to the listening uh, element per se and uh, we focus on different aspects of listening. Now, listen for emotions, I have already highlighted this, but again uh, when you are listening, focus on the specific elements the intonation, the tone, the facial expression, which we will discuss at a later point of time, so that you can understand what the person wants. Uh, you may or may not give that to that person, but at least you are aware of it. Now, let us focus on listening in order to share and uh, this is something which I have highlighted in the context of the short story that we did together, the lament and uh, sharing is something which uh, which is an asset to a good listener, because when you share as a listener, uh, the person who is talking to you need not actually want some advice from you, any advice from you. The person who is talking to you just might want to unload and if you are able to listen to that person unloading and appreciate that sharing, you are in a very, very intense way being successful as a communicator uh, in an emotional context. This happens to sharpen your emotional intelligence and it is going to be very, very meaningful as you proceed with any kind of socio-cultural transaction. Listen in order to uh, uh, listen to others as you want to listen to yourself. Now, uh, this is very important uh, because then empathy, the element of trying to understand how other people feel is something which automatically comes into your listening. Going briefly, you, you move to check, take feedback. Now, this is very important where the element of speaking comes in very mildly, but it is important that uh, you cross check that you have understood correctly. Wherever there is an ambiguity, you need to check, you need to take a feedback. So, we are moving in the realm of in the direction of speaking, but obviously, listening and speaking cannot be separated. Although, uh, for the sake of convenience, convenience, today we are focusing on listening only listen for content in order to connect, because you see that listening is so that you can make sense of things, so you can link up your ideas with the other person's ideas. Genuine curiosity, cul cultivate genuine curiosity, tell me more, let me hear what you have to say. It is not that you are just doing it uh, casually, the way it happened uh, with the officer in the story, the lament, that he asked casually then forgot all about it. Now, not that, but listening, whenever you are listening, for whatever time you are listening, listen with all intensity, with all interest, defensive, non-defensive. Now, uh, very often when we are listening, there is a tendency to be defensive. Wherever things are told about us, which are critical, we tend to be defensive. It is very important to develop an open attitude, to face it, to listen and to react to your own thoughts 
and to open up to your own thoughts and not to be afraid of what you are listening to. Now that has a significant effect in the way we, you can negotiate, the way you can converse with the other person even in difficult situations. But you need to be convinced that this makes sense and you need to try it out. Again we will try to devise experiments or activities which you can do by accessing the discussion forum for some of the things that I have already shared here with you. Listen for differences because when we talk to somebody else, the person is somebody other than us, ourselves, the person is somebody other than myself. So this person obviously will have differences and it is important to be aware of how the other person is different from me, not necessarily to disagree. You can always look at uh, the other's point of view and agree. It is not important uh, uh, that you develop a sense of disagreement, disagreement. But what is important is that you learn to understand how the other person is different, how th what he is saying or she is saying is different, to acknowledge the difference and accept it as something which is a part of our existence. That makes transaction much easier. Finally, deep listening which uh, involves listen, listening between words, because very often what we say and what we mean may, may be different. We will talk about this in detail when we are talking about uh, nonverbal communication, body language, deceit and there we will bring in speech also and text. Sometimes we say things we do not mean, sometimes we uh, do not say things we mean. So, it is very important to guess that and that would involve looking at nonverbal communication as well. So, that will be an element which we will be taking up again. Listen for inconsistencies because that is very important when you are doing any kind of transaction. Listen for uh, to classify, categorize information because so that you can store away information in a meaningful way. It is important for the kind of listening that you are doing right now because you are learning. Listening for convergences and divergences. We have already highlighted this, but even in academic context, even when emotions are not involved, where facts are involved. You may agree, you may may not agree, you may appreciate, you may not appreciate, you listen for these and be aware of the fact that these are the changes, these are the kinds of uh, responses that are taking place within your mind. So, this is the other thing that you need to do. Now, finally, before we wrap up this session, we will focus on listening in groups because conversation is dialogues with one person or with different people at different points of time is one thing, but conversation is again another important aspect of listening and uh, whether you are having a group discussion, a mock group discussion for a job interview or a genuine group discussion in your workplace, these elements become significant. So, listen for content, the intent that these people have and their attitudes because these will decide how you are going to respond to them compare and categorize speakers, classify them into different categories, know who has which kind of an attitude, this will be significant. Assimilate this information, classify them as we have said about classifying them earlier and once you have done all these things, this will become a habit as you try to cultivate this practice, get ready to speak. So, you would be able to do this very quickly as you proceed with these techniques when you try it, it out, uh, when you try it out with your friends in different kinds of places where you are permitted to listen or you find a, find a context where you are listening, you develop these habits and you find that you are able to do these things and this makes your listening much more meaningful. Now, we take a pause and I ask you this question. We have been talking about listening, you have already taken a quiz on listening. Now, you tell me, do you feel that uh, until this point of time, you had learned everything there was about listening or is it that today in this small short session, you have been able to learn something new, something which you feel is meaningful. Just answer this question truthfully, try out some of the things and maybe your response, your perception about your own listening will also change to a certain extent. It happened uh, to be the same with me as we, I proceeded to explore listening as some as a serious area for exploration before I started interacting with you. So, at the end we have the summary of the key points in the slide and uh, in the next class we will be taking up 
speaking as one of the fundamental other communication strategies which we are going to touch upon again and again as we proceed. Thank you friends.